works when you turn it on is you'll get flashing lights, ABS and traction. They're just telling you the systems are active. As soon as the wheels start spinning, those lights go out. Uh, it's only if you use the button to deactivate traction, you'll get a solid light that stays on while you ride, or press for a longer period of time, press through, 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 until you get an icon change now, everything's disconnected. Mm -hmm. So she's old school. No ABS, no traction control. The mode button will still affect the other aspects of what the mode button adjusts. Power delivery, suspension setting, but no impact on ABS or traction because it's deactivated. If you turn the bike off at the kill switch and then restarted it, you would retain those settings. If you turn it off the key, it's, this will be the interesting one, and put it back on, you default to the systems being active. When the traction's cutting in, does it flash like on yes. the S1? Yes, so exactly. It's very similar, isn't it? Very yeah. similar. The electronics package is really similar. They've yep. used that technology and applied it to a dual purpose situation. So they're the flashing lights and that's what that's all about. The mode button, like we spoke about last night, you press it once to wake it up. You get your current setting with the arrow and then you get the, a duplicate of that and from there, Actually, the current setting is the above one. Yep. The one below is what you're about to select. Mm -hmm. So you've got sequential from rain to road to dynamic to enduro. And on this model, because the enduro pro plug's not fitted, it'll go straight back to rain. Um, and, and let's just say you're from enduro at the moment and you're about to hit the bitumen. So you want the road setting. You've got 60 seconds while you're rolling to go in and out with zero throttle. So it's not something you have to rush it's something that's pretty easy to deal with. If you're stationary, it'll make the change by itself. You don't have to do that sequence. So that's how the mode button's working. Um, like I said, anyone who has ridden an S1000 will be quite familiar with that sort of arrangement. But if you haven't, that's, that's how it works. Um, ESA button, press it once to wake it up and it'll tell you where you're currently at. You're at a single helmet preload setting in the normal damping. Have you used this before? No, 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 jump, I'm jump around. If you've used it before, I've played with it, so I've played it. <laughs> now you've got to have right. the engine running to make a, an effect to the preload. So at the moment, I think someone's been playing with this one because it's making an effect right now. So press it once, wake it up, press it again, moves to the next setting, which is helmet and luggage. So we've got panniers or a gear bag on the back. Press it again, and you get two helmets. You've got a pillion on the back. That's affecting preload change to the rear only okay so we've one rider today without luggage so we might as well start in the single helmet while it's flashing the change is taking effect do that stationary with the engine running you can feel it it's quite obvious if you're sitting on the bike with the weight through your feet just go from the double to the helmet and, and feel the extreme of the preload now on the fly press it once to wake it up sport normal hard uh, sorry, hard, soft, and normal. Um, so they're, they're changeable on the fly. So it takes a couple of gauge, you just leave yeah, it on. Yeah, just boom, boom, boom. Press it once to wake up, yep. and then sequentially just press it, yep. and you get your effect. Um, so. How did you get the helmet thing happening? Sorry? How did you get the helmet thing happening? Press it once to wake it up, press and hold. Oh. Yeah, so these multi function buttons are handy. The reason I think it works well is because you don't have to go into a, a menu option and then start scrolling to the function that you're looking for. It's simple. That does that. A short press has one function, a long press has another, and you're not diving into menus and looking for things. And the other good thing is with the traction and ABS, if you use the kill switch, it retains the setting. You know, I know on some competitor brands, as soon as you kill the bike, either here or here, default, defaults to a uh, standard and you're always changing that. And like I said last night, with this mode button and your off-road settings, there's a lot less reason to deactivate. So I really will probably find somewhere to do a nice demonstration. An ABS demo in rain mode on dirt versus the same demo at the same speed in enduro mode on dirt will have a much different effect because the ABS is um, really calibrated to both situations and the road calibration is not as effective on the dirt 
the, the dirt calibration is probably not as effective on the bitumen either. Miles, well, turning the thing off by the kill switch to retain everything, yep. how long do you reckon is safe? Like, sort of an hour or two? Ah, look, doesn't it's usually the sort of thing. No, yeah. it doesn't use a lot of power because it kills the main oh. beam. It's the sort of thing that I would recommend when you, you're stopping to wait for someone. You just can't see them, you pull over. Okay, I want to kill the engine, kill it with that. Yeah. You might wait 30 seconds, you might wait a few minutes. I mean, with the other system I've done, the cafe stop. And yeah, you can do a stop here, but, yeah. for longer, but you know, mm -hmm. your condition of your battery is going to have an impact on that. If your, battery, if your bike's a few years old and you're going to stop more than a couple of minutes, you're probably better off turning off at the key. I think it remembers the ESA mode, doesn't it? Like, yeah, yeah ESA stays the same. That when stays. I talk about default, it's yeah. only the safety systems yeah. Yeah. that return. ESA stays where you are. Yeah, uncomfy, it stays uncomfy. Down boy. Flick it across, set it. While you're riding, pressing forward will go up in one kilometre increments, and backwards will go down in one kilometre increments. Um, deactivate by either moving the button across, turning the throttle off will sense that you're. Uh, you want the, the cruise control off, touch the brake or pull in the clutch and it'll just go back to normal. Yet, or more longer term, so you've got fuel consumption, average speed, average speed 5.9, so that must have been reset, press and hold resets these things. This is your tyre pressure monitoring, it's in PSI, thanks Scott Norman. Um, it's available in bar or kilopascals as well, but it has to be changed at the dealership. I prefer them always to be set up in PSI because yeah, yeah. that's the most commonly known. It's got miles per gallon on fuel. Yeah, okay, I heard that. One yeah. of the bikes had that, my apologies. That's right. We'll get that changed back. Old school. <laughs> old school. So your front tyre <laughs> pressure and your rear tyre pressure will be displaying on the bike live as soon as the wheels are spinning, it transmits. You can actually use it as a gauge if you're going to go hit a bit of sand. You pull up, leave the engine live. You can kill the engine, but not turn it off at the key. You go down and bleed the pressures, and that'll give you a live reading. Okay, so it can use as a gauge as well. And the left one's the front. Yep, front and rear. <coughs> Whoops, sorry. And oil level, just an oil check. Date, ex exterior temperature, 27 already. Engine mm. temp, so you've got the live engine temp to a decimal point of um, one. Is the date for if you've had a really big bell ring it is, amongst other things. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's what's going on there. Your trip meter <laughs> will give you one trip, two trip, range, um, about 3.30. This will probably start climbing still. I've noticed when you fill them up, they go to an estimated range of about 3.60. Um, so it, it probably will start climbing a bit more, depending if it's been topped Does right it up. Is it tank miles? No, no same, same tank. improve the fuel consumption. Um, it's, it's the same or a little bit better, yeah. yeah. Um, average speed, um, and there's your trip. Where's my auto trip? I don't think auto trip's been engaged on this one. I'll have to double check. I think there's a quite a comprehensive setup menu. You can go in and, and sort of customize your dash. Every one I've ridden to now has had the auto trip setting okay. live. So if you jump on your bike and scroll through your trips, your trip A is probably set on zero now, or maybe 1K because we just rode them up from the basement so it'll reset overnight like I mentioned last night. Um, with the disc, with the range that'll count down to zero. When it gets to zero, traditionally on, on some of the previous models you've still been able to get about 30 k's out of it. With this bike, I actually tested it myself, I got about 15 out of it and it stopped. So you wouldn't want to count on any more than 10 15 max once it hits zero. So as soon as you're getting a fuel warning light at about 60 range, start thinking about your fuel options. Try to get some fuel in it before you get to zero. <coughs> High beam is uh, pulled towards you for a flash, push away and it locks on. So multi-function again, so pull forward, you get a flash, push away, you get the, the high beam staying on. Um, I fibbed last night, we do actually have the enduro rear brake lever on, on all but one or two of the bikes, so that's good for you to be able to flick the, the extra pedal up for the bitumen, which you're going to be doing a lot of today, flip it down to the off-road when you're doing extended periods of off-road riding and you might be standing up. Can you do the screen for us, Miles? Alright, okay. High position. Cool. Low position. These winglets are new. The, I mean, everything's new, but the previous model didn't have this winglet arrangement. The Adventure had a winglet arrangement just to give you extra protection, but that obviously keeps them 
wind and, and weather function. and rain off yep. you. Um, the headlight covers are removable, so at, at night or if you want to clean it, it's very easy to clean. They just pop on and off. So don't put your GoPro on that then. Uh, they're, pretty, they're pretty solid, they're, they're, it's quite a nice indent. Yeah. It wouldn't fall off in a hurry. But it, will, it might it might with a way to be. It depends. Okay. I'm glad you showed me that. Yep. Yeah. Um, any Is questions? Is there any tools at all? Very little. I don't Is think it might have even been removed from under the seat. We sometimes do that with the Because we don't system. trust you to play with tools. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that, Trevor. Any the any seat, questions? You've got two components to adjust the seat. The front component has a H on it, the rear component has a H. By flicking that that way, you get the L for the low position. By flicking that that way, you get the L for the low position. You can actually go high at the front, low at the back and vice versa. So it's very tunable and the pillion seat's adjustable in fore and aft as well. So once you've adjusted it to the position you want, which is going to be high, so I'll just do that again. The seat locator simply just slides forward. <laughs> and the seat's on. Wonderful. So what we're going to do now is just fit the Enduro Pro plug to the wiring loom, which gives you the uh, extra mode. Uh, so we're simply just removing the seat and accessing the plug that comes fitted into that little recess. We pop open the Port, remove the cap, fit the plug, and that would normally be cable tied through that cable tie back there. We're just going to sit it underneath, and we've got Enduro Pro plug fitted. So if we just have a look at the dash, you can see the, the little plug symbol, and if we scroll through the modes now, the next mode will be Enduro. Pro. So that will take effect now and it's in the most open off-road mode with the ABS deactivated on the rear and the ability to wheel spin uh, the rear under throttle with the most freedom apart from deactivating altogether. So that's pretty simple and straightforward. It's just up to the customer to make that decision based on the fact that he's an advanced off-road rider and there's aggressive off-road tyres fitted to the motorcycle. Thank you.